Okay, we're getting started. We got to get this here live on Facebook. Share on my timeline. All righty. Of course, the dog starts barking. <laughs> so we'll get going. Hey. That is the the dog. He is barking. Hey, pep. It's gonna be all right. Okay, I gotta give you a gotta give you a, a treat here to keep you quiet. We are going to be starting momentarily. Yay! All right, we'll be starting shortly. I want to come on here too, so that's part of it. There we are. Hey. Okay. So I want to share. There we go. There we are. Now let's see if I can see myself on Facebook as well. And we're sharing my screen. Okay, there we go. From the beginning. From beginning. All right, there we are. See if it's, it's delayed. All right, guys. Put my head over here to the side. All right, so while we're getting the slides up, just so that you uh, kind of could see, um, Rosalina, we're coming up, we're coming up, girl. Lunch and learn. So I don't have lunch and learn, I have a uh, coffee drink and, and learning. But so that you all see, but for people to come on here, And uh, we'll go over our lunch and learn. Okay, just want to make sure. There we are. I see me, but I don't see. Ah, there I am. Okay. Hey, can you see me? All right, if I stop the share for right now, just to 
give people time to come on. Can kind of could see, I got the, uh, let me mute this probably. Okay, this delay. So I wanted to do this today on International Women's Day because we are, I guess you would say heartfelt. Ladies, we're heart-centered, we're heart -centered, heartfelt. Not that men are, but let me stop the share for a second. All right, there we go. So you all can see the hair, hair, hair journey here. Day number six it is, day six or seven, I'm not really sure. Uh, but I'm liking it. I'm getting used to it. Move my dog here. Hey, don't want to roll over you. And uh, basically, we're going to go over today about tribes. Because one of the things that when you have a platform is you need a tribe, right? So a lot of times people say, well, who's your tribe? So a lot of it is, is who you connect with socially, but also, too, when you do conferences and that sort of thing. So, you know, Speakers Magazine, we have uh, a magazine that is event-oriented. And so, say for instance, um, with Dr. Geneva, her tribe is different from my tribe, right? So she has influence over another tribe. But all of us have tribes, people who like us, trust us, know us, uh, listen to us. So this particular one, she's gonna be at the Michigan Association of Female Entrepreneurs. She'll be speaking there, and that's part of her tribe. So one of the things I wanna do is really go over this PowerPoint, and you'll see I'll, my face will be real small in the corner, is really talking about how you engage with the tribe from uh, doing different techniques and things online, all right? So we got five people here. Let's see a comment here, make sure. Can you all hear me okay? Yay, hey, Elizabeth, hey, Ros oh, hey Rosaline. Okay, good, all right. Okay, now I've got the Bluetooth going in over there. So let me turn the blue. Too much technology is not good. All right, let me, because uh, now I hear myself going in the other, other room on the Bluetooth. All right, there we go. All right, so let me share my screen so that you all can see. Make sure you can see that. I'm going to go back to that. Make sure you can see it. Can you all see that? It's a little bit delayed here. Okay. Can you all see that? Okay. So we're going to be going over six heartfelt strategies to engage and connect with your tribe. And what does this have to do with anything, right? What, is, what does a tribe have to do with branding? Well, part of branding is the five Ps. We go over the five Ps. We go over platform building, and this is like that first P. So let's go into this. So I promise it won't, won't be long. So a tribe is, like I said in the email yesterday, is often taking care of your ideal client, your client avatar, right, Tanya? But it goes much deeper than that. It, it talks about, um, it gives, your tribe gives as well as receives, they, that you inspire them, that you get feedback, and then also that there is reciprocity with them. They are kindred spirits. Actually, like a long time ago, I wanted to have an organization called Kindred Spirits. That was probably about 10 or 15 years ago. And I want to have it like a book club because most of the people in my tribe, we love books. So kindred spirits are people for me that I think of that are authors and speakers. Those are kindred spirits. They are a social group with whom you feel like you belong to and that you find it easiest and most rewarding to help. And the key word there is rewarding to help. For me, my tribe are authors and speakers. Hands down, you will find that even like in terms of my friends, they are authors and speakers. They have a lot to say. They have a message that they want to share with the world. So when you think about your tribe, you think about your ideal customer. Who are those people? So how do you get engaged with them? We talk about heartfelt. We're not talking about how to uh, really trick someone into listening to you. We're not talking about how to man manipulate people to listen to you. We are not talking about any kind of those uh, shyster type of ways, okay? We're talking about a way where you can heartfelt connect with people because you have something that you want to share. So the reasons why we use email, even though social, me social media is the thing and I'm right here on Facebook, I'm right here on Facebook, yeah, right here on Facebook looking down to make sure. Uh, you wanna make sure that you have email. 
from the standpoint that most people don't buy from social media, they buy from email. They are part of your tribe. So I, I go with this number one, because you have to have an email manager or email uh, program. So a long time ago, I used Constant Contact, probably about 15, 16 years ago. Nothing wrong with that. You do need something that will collect email addresses and it's legal for you to send out email, marketing emails. Or then I moved up to AWeber. AWeber is great. I love AWeber. That's probably a good one for most people. A lot of people are using MailChimp. But you also can use something like ActiveCampaign, which is what I use. I could send from my phone and I can also send from, from, the, from a computer. But it is legal. You can't just spam people just like, oh, I've got this big uh, thing in my email. I'll just hit select all in Google. No, you, you go to, you, that's, that's against the law. That's really good spamming. So the reasons why we use email primarily is to really keep you fresh up time. You're on top of mind, right? Because a lot of times out of sight, out of mind, even though they may see you in social, again, in social, it is, it's, like a, it's like a party. They could be in a grocery store line. They could be in the bathroom. They're watching social media. But an email, typically, when someone goes to the email to read it, they are focused, right? So you want to be on top of someone's mind. It creates a relationship with you. I just noticed I didn't have my wedding ring on. Um, creates a relationship with you, um, a relationship with them. It builds trust. And the whole thing about it is building trust. So if you have a, it's like you're talking to a friend. And so a lot of times you'll, we used to call it email blasts. Like I'm going to send out an e-blast. Well, I did a blog about this. No one likes to be blasted. They like to be talked to. So you want to have a dialogue. So don't just send out marketing materials. Don't just send out flyers. Don't send out just stuff that's like, buy, buy, buy. You want to have a dialogue. Uh, it sets you apart from your competitors. If you do this, it's those emails are opening um, it's, it's who's opening, they are opening and reading and, and you want them to be reading yours and it keeps them happy to buy and to invest. That's really the main thing. You want people to understand. Now there's an art to email writing, but I don't want you to, I want you to write from the heart, just like you would write a letter to a friend. I was talking to my daughter, uh, the other day and she was saying something about, we were talking about the differences in, in, and keeping up with friends. I said, well, a long time ago before social media, if I had a friend like Clara uh, Wilkerson who lived in uh, Washington, D.C. a long time ago, out of college, would I have to write her a letter or call her? I said, more than likely, well, I would write letters or we would send cards. She was like, oh, that's such an art. So it's an art to writing letters, writing letters to a friend. And I know a lot of the young millennials, probably they don't write letters, but baby boomers, this is where you could shine because you know how to write a letter. You know how to talk to someone in a letter, not a memo, but a letter. So this is where I talk about heartfelt strategies, right? Because you write a letter and the subject line matters. And in my branding accelerator programs, I give people out a list of suggested headlines that they can use in their emails. So make sure they're open because before you even open the letter, you want to see what it says on the outside, right? And that's really the whole point of the, the subject line. So effective emails. One, know what your people want and deliver it. Okay, know what they want and deliver it. No one wants, the junk mail is when you go to your mailbox and it's like, I don't want this and you throw it in the trash, right? You get all these coupons of things you don't want. It's not, but if you get something like I get a piece of mail from say Joel Osteen, I say, hey, I got a piece of mail from Joel Osteen. I open it up and I read it, right? So you look forward to receiving it. Um, you can forward questions. You request feedback. Even complaints are big clues that you can fine tune your products or programs. So a lot of times people will respond back and say, hey, Pam, I want to know what's the best way to publish my book. Or, hey, Pam, I want to know what's the, what's the best way to promote. What, what, what PR services would you use? So those are the kind of things that when people hit reply back to your emails, it helps you. And I keep like a little check sheet of questions that people ask me. And those are one of the, the main things that you do. And the email, too, you nurture the relationship. You nurture the relationship. You make sure that your email strategy should be all about service service, not charlatanism. <laughs> if there's such a word, charlatanism, <laughs> but it's all about service, right? Staying in touch with people. Don't ignore planning and creating a strong email strategy. When I say a strategy is like, so for the month, 
you have four weeks and within that week you may want to send two emails so out of that week you've got eight meals that you eight emails you want to send that month and so what what are you going to cover what does your what does your tribe want what kind of service are you going to provide um if you're sporadic about email right now uh know after this be a little bit more uh consistent consistent is everything in branding that's really the whole point branding is an ing and it is something that you have to do on a consistent basis if you want to build a strong relationship with your tribe. Now, if you just want to kind of like pop in and pop out of them, they'll half listen to you and half not, but you want to be consistent. I'm not saying spamming. I hate when someone sends me an email like every day, two or three times a day, because that's a good way to get deleted, blocked, and unsubscribed. So when you're giving actual content, you are doing good. Now, for me, I have. Um, 10,000 people on my email list. Now, are all 10,000 people opening the email? No, some people get on a lot of email lists because they just wanna check you out. You got like competitors on your email list, you have potential clients on your email list, you have all kinds of people on your email list, but the people who you're talking to more than likely you're gonna open them, those are who you want to, to focus on, that particular avatar, that particular client. You don't want to be everything to everybody because if you're trying to talk to everybody, you talk to nobody. If you're trying to talk to everybody, you talk to nobody. So when you're writing your email, get in the exact idea of what that customer wants and write the letter to them. So how to use email. Like I said, AWeber or MailChimp is a good starter. Active Campaign is what I use a little bit more complex, but you could also use like Infusionsoft. If you have constant contact fine, just be consistent with that. You know, some people use it because they've had it for a long time. But I will say it's probably time to upgrade to something that's a little bit more sophisticated because they do tagging with it and everything. Um, and also to have an email marketing campaign and write an email series for each campaign. Now, if you go to panperrypr.com, you'll see what I'm talking about when I say a series. It's an auto automatic series. So when you go to my website and you go to panperrypr.com, you'll get a five-part series, and it's the Get Out There series. And the Get Out There are five audio lessons on how to get out there, talking about PR, branding, and marketing. All right, but it's a series, and it's evergreen. All right, it's meaning like it was set up, and it's evergreen. Now, you can always add different series to that depending on how people come into your email. But these are some of the things that we go over in detail in the Branding Accelerator program. And if you have questions, you're like, hey, stop, wait, Pam, I didn't get it. What are you talking about? It's, this is all Greek. Then we stop and we explain it to you and we actually go on. So how to use e email. My top email tips are set reminders about offers and events, create an email special design to re-engage past clients or subscribers, that have never opened your email, and you could see that by your email system, right? It'll say something like, hey, are you still interested in getting my email? And, and in your list, you can see, if you have a particular system, it'll say that it'll show a list of those that never opened your email. And maybe they aren't interested in opening your email. Hey, if you're not interested in opening your email, we pay um, by subscriber on email lists. So if you're gonna get, if you're just like, wasting space on my email list I would rather you get off because I'm paying money than for you to stay on so it's once it's very once in a while you know just to re-engage maybe they didn't know or or maybe whatever it's a good thing to say are you still interested in staying on my list and then also to track your emails one of the main things if you don't know your numbers you don't know your business so really track your emails your autoresponder will provide you and it's so interesting to see of, of who's opening your email and who's not okay step two facebook owns instagram if you all didn't know so instagram is the thing so one of the things that if you're not on instagram my baby boomers maybe they're not on instagram and they think oh that's just for millennials no no it's, it's for everybody facebook bought instagram they swallowed them up for like billions of dollars so instagram is the thing so i'm gonna just go over like some quick reasons of why to use instagram and uh just you know obviously you know, millions of people view Instagram photos a month. Um, among them, your tribe is probably over there. So one of the things I like about Instagram is geotagging, meaning like if I'm in Vegas, like I was last week when I got this hair done, I geotag that I was at the Mirage, right? And by that location, you can find different things of people at the Mirage. The same thing with Facebook, but, but Instagram does it very, very succinct, 
Facebook has a whole lot of stuff. Um, you could take taking or sharing photos instantly via your mobile using existing Instagram hashtag. Instagram is like the beast on the hashtags or creating your own. One of the things that I have as my hashtag is Brandy Accelerator. So on Instagram and on Facebook, you can click it. People ask me, well, how is that? Um, how is that? Uh, how do you do those hashtags? Just hit it. Just hit it and it'll actually go right to your, um, oops, make sure I'm getting this. Hey, Darren. Like the beast on the hashtag or creating your own. One of the hey, things Darren. I have is my okay. hashtag is Brandy Accelerator. All right. I want to make sure. Hey, Darren, you were in, you were in Vegas last week too. Oh my God. I didn't know that. <laughs> so if you were, if you actually geotag, you would see that I was in Vegas, right? Uh, the other thing you can find influencers and peers to follow and influencers, you know, those are those the people that are actually experts in the, in your field. Uh, the other thing is um, finding specific people that you want to connect with. I love Instagram for that. And you, we find that through the hashtags. The other thing is um, continuing your story, connect with um, the one that they connect with the most. And the other one is linking or commenting other people's photos in the Instagram feed. So when you look at Instagram, it is very, Facebook has so much stuff going on. Right, and Instagram is getting like that too because Facebook bought Instagram. But you have Instagram stories, you have Instagram IGTV, and you also have Instagram, but not as much as Facebook. You got Facebook shopping, you got pages, you got groups. So, really, it's a lot of times when people want to just kind of like relax, they go to Instagram, right? Because that's one of the places where they just feel like they're not, it doesn't take up as much brain power as Facebook because there's so much going on. It's visual topics of conversation and it emphasizes activities and creates a powerful stream of connection. And I will say that for me, a lot of people see me on Facebook, but they do connect with me with Instagram. I don't post a lot on Instagram where Facebook is kind of like, ooh, it could be like hyper. I always say, I said, people, sometimes you give me too much Facebook and I, have, I, can't, I can't consume it. So on Instagram, you don't really have that. They're not flooding you as much, but you do feel a connection. So how do you use Instagram. Just if you're not on there, whatever, download the app, sign in using your Facebook. That's always better because Facebook and Instagram are together. Fill out your profile. Now that's a whole thing and write your bio. Now one of the things that we go over in the branding accelerator, step one, once you kind of like understand your purpose and your tribe is that, hey, Rosaline, <laughs> Rosaline, it says, well, I keep the Facebook live up for a while. Will I take it down immediately? No, I'm not going to take it down immediately. I want to share. I want to give this information out. So no, I'm not going to take it down immediately. But one of the things that we spend a lot of time on um, a whole module is really writing bios, writing bios that aren't boring, writing bios that really pick up what your avatar wants to know about you. All right. Not what you want to know about you, but what your avatar wants to know about you. So let me just really quick and then upload photos. Okay. He wanted to say hi. Okay, you happy? Say hi, Peppy. All right, so he's saying hi. It's always when I get on a live that he does this, right? So my top Instagram um, links is to link your Instagram account to other social media accounts like Flickr, which is, I have a Flickr account. I have thousands and thousands of photos over there. Twitter, which I have 26,000 people on one Twitter account following me, 3,000 on another. Speakers Magazine has roughly over, I think they have about three or 400 over there. I think I have about 800 at the ministry marketing one or Tumblr. Tumblr's going out of business though, so don't, don't hook the Tumblr anymore. But I did love Tumblr. So, or make sure that it goes to, um, that it goes to your, your website. Because like I said, Tumblr was cool. If you put your Tumblr up there, Tumblr's going to be going out of business. So you want to make sure that you link your Instagram, um, to other social media accounts, but also in the bio part that you also make sure that you add your website link under your username. I could probably go through a lot of folks Instagram right now and it's like, oh, I want to connect with them, but not on Instagram because, you know, I want to go to their website and then they don't have their website name there. So please, please, you can easily do this by adding your location to your username and then typing in your URL. Please do that. That's one of the, one of the main things that I really want. So now, message. Method number three. Okay, you want to get down? Okay. Method number three is what we're doing right now, a Facebook Live. Some people do Facebook Live and Instagram Live at the same time. Hey, Randy. I don't do that because I need my phone. Some people have an iPad, whatever. 
I'm a baby boomer. I can't do all that at the same time. Okay. Some people are Instagram live, Facebook live, and you know, sometimes people are doing Periscope. Um, Periscope, I think is going out of business, I believe. But anyway, people don't use Periscope as much. So Facebook live. So that's kind of like what we're doing. Felicia, Julia. Oh, thanks for joining. Okay. Ah, uh, thank you, Rosalie. All right. So we're going over reasons to use Facebook. Okay. So a lot of times people don't like to use Facebook Live, especially us baby boomers. It's like, you know what? I don't want to get on Facebook Live. I, I just ain't feeling it today. I, you know, I, I don't, it's too much being in people's face. Get on there. We have wisdom to share. We have wisdom to share. And we may not look like we did when we were 20 or 30 or 40 or 50. <laughs> we're getting close to 60, right? But it's okay. I'm here. All right. So one of the reasons why we want to use Facebook Live is immediate, it's transparent. All right. It's highly interactive. How I'm being interactive right now with you guys, because I have the PowerPoint up, is that I'm I see you guys on my phone. So Rosaline, I see Rosaline is there, I see Randy's there, I see Beverly. Hey Beverly, I see Tradina. You were in Vegas. I saw you were in Vegas. You were with the Vortex thing or whatever, uh, with Les Brown and and I think um, Celeste was there last week as well, Tadina. She was there. Celeste and Jewel Tankert was there. So it's highly interactive. Some of the beneficial functions are you could share live events, uh, uh, share live events, uh, big or small, real time. People love real time. Uh, be notified when one of your followers are broadcasting live so you can jump on. So one of the things about the Facebook Live, and Facebook loves Facebook Live. They're trying to compete against YouTube. So they want to be the big video uh, hosting, the big video kahuna, right? They so so with them, they whenever someone does a live, they're going to alert. It's like it goes into the stream a lot faster than if you're just posting a picture because they want you to instantly jump on and view the broadcast. They're trying to take money away from youtube and you know google owns youtube so anyway so it's a big fight in this internet world um other thing you can give broadcast powerful titles include sign up on your websites and your profile and build excitement and launches and behind the scene peaks of what's going on so a lot of people use that and in the branding accelerator i talk about a little bit further about some of the things the way you use facebook live and it is really really cool all right i'm gonna hurry up here because i have 36 slides i got carried away i love this stuff um Using Facebook Live, download the app. Obviously, you know how to do that because you're on there. Ways to use Facebook Live. So one of the things that you want to do is you want to introduce uh, product offerings. Like on Saturday, uh, just so that you know, um, Speak Up, the book, is launching. So we're going to be doing a, a, a virtual launch. And the virtual launch will be on Facebook. So it'll be a Zoom launch like this with a PowerPoint. And then I think it has like six or seven of us. George Frazier is going to open up because he did the foreword. I'll be introducing him because I helped get him the, to, to make sure that he's connected with the, the Black Speakers Network group, obviously, because we're in partners with the Speakers Magazine. But that's the launch that we're doing. It's the virtual launch of the book. The other thing is showcasing... Um, key happenings at a live event. So you all know, that's my thing, right? I don't, I don't have my microphone, but I normally will have my microphone and I'm doing live interviews at events. That is my thing. I love doing that. I feel like I'm entertainment tonight or something, but I'm at a conference. Uh, you can also spontaneously introduce influencers at live events, do weekly Q&A, FAQ. I do that in my mentoring program. I do the lives and do Q&A, making sure that I'm I'm Rosalie. Hey, Pamela Wright. Okay. And then also, too, offering um, instant spot training. And it's kind of like what we're doing, especially in a single area program. Um, think of Instagram more personal, Periscope, learning more business, and you've got a perfect balance. So it's, it's basically, you know, when I do an Instagram Live, I'm not doing a teaching like this. I'm not. It's just like, hey, I'm on Instagram Live, whatever. It's just, it's personal. Periscope, like I said, that's kind of going away, but but Facebook Live is kind of like where you could do this. And and how do I do this? I go over this in the uh, Branding Accelerator, but really how I'm doing this is doing it through Zoom, okay, and webinar. Ways to use Facebook Live. Make sure your Facebook Live uh, branding and content um, can boost your authenticity and transparency, right? So you want to make sure that you're doing that, um, that your broadcasts feel like they're... Um, 
you're offering something to an audience that is, um, you don't want it to be cold, you want it to be warm. So right now, like I showed you Peppy and all that kind of stuff, but it's just like it's warm. It's like you're talking to someone in a room, right? That doesn't mean that it has to be overproduced. Like I was just getting started and I was like, okay, you know, don't be afraid of technology. That's one of the things. Don't be afraid of technology. If it doesn't work the right way, um, the way you think it should, it's okay. It's technology. It's, it's, it will have some hiccups. And, you know, add value always to the time at, at the thing. You know, when people are sitting there, you're making sure that, you add, that you're that you adding value. All right. Um, method four, uh, really creating or running a Facebook group. So how many people have Facebook groups? Does anybody? Okay, say, tell me who has a Facebook group. And I'll give you the reasons why if you don't have a Facebook group. So these are reasons to, to use your own Facebook group. So one of the things is uh, you get to set the rules um, and the conditions that will attract and retain the right members. So I have four Facebook groups. I have uh, one for uh, the Pam Perry Mentoring Group. I have a Facebook group for uh, Brand Your Best Life. I have Chocolate Pages Facebook group, and I have Social Media Swag. I have some other groups, but those are like the main groups. So social media swag, obviously people who love social media. Brand Your Best Life, obviously talking about branding. I even talk about health. We talk about spiritual stuff. Chocolate Pages is just for authors. And then the mentoring group is the mentoring group that's overall the people who are in the mentoring group. So I'm really teaching and sharing in there. So the group keeps people focused. Even when Facebook users no longer bother with their fees, they will log in to see what their group is doing. And I'm, those are the groups that I own, the four that I said, but I'm also in a lot of other groups as well. The Black Speakers Network is a group that I'm in as well. So it's a perfect vehicle providing focused content that are eagerly read, share, click. And then also to the Black, the National Association of Black Podcasters is a group. And that's another group of just focused people who are podcasters, black podcasters. So that's one that a group that will pop in and will actually do video training on how to really podcast better. Creates a community. And one of the things that I told, I have other admins for our um, National Association of Black Podcasters in the, in the mentoring group, is that when people do join your group to welcome them, welcome them and say, hey, welcome to the group. Uh, Glad you're here. Drop your URL. Drop your Facebook. How can we support you? And it's just one of those things that women do best that we just really show that we care, that we want to engage with you. So make sure that you basically, that you, when people do join your group, that you welcome them. And it positions you as a leader as well. So you want to make sure that you have a Facebook group that maybe it's the same name as your, um, you do. Okay, good. Pam, what's the name of your group? Put your link down there, what your group is. Pamela, put your, Pamela Wright. Put the name of your um, Facebook group. So you, you want it, like if you have a book, maybe you have a Facebook for your group. Um, my friend Portia, she has a group called Detroit Caregivers. You know, so she basically is a group of people who are Detroit, I'm a caregiver, of people who are caregivers for their parents. So some other reasons to own your Facebook group is the power to remove, you have the power to remove disruptive members. And sometimes people go in Facebook groups and that's not a way to engage. And you just start spamming and talking about what you're selling, what you're doing, mm -mm, mm -mm. you get removed, you get blocked. But don't do that anyway. Just like if you went to a, a cocktail party and the person just vomits all out about what they're doing and what they're selling and what how wonderful they are, don't you just walk away and say, like, so you don't want to be disruptive. You want to engage and have a conversation. And the best person, the best way to have a conversation is first to listen. So when you go into a group, listen before you start really posting a whole bunch of stuff. Um, tends to weed out those who are not action takers. You get wonderful, relevant ideas and products. It's really value in the groups to help you refine your branding, um, provide customer service through your group, instant friendly way. Um, one of the things is just like you, you, you basically, it's a, it's valuable and basically it's, it can be an extension of your membership site, which is something we talk about in the branding accelerator because membership sites are really, um, a good way to really, for all, especially for baby boomers, for all the information that we have rolling around in our head, in our file cabinets, it's a way to repurpose it into a membership group and actually deliver that information online so that people can actually consume it. And then the Facebook group keeps it so that you're in touch with people. And, and if they have any questions about it, you can then answer it there.
the business, okay, the Business Empowerment Network, the Business Empowerment Networking Group is Pamela's uh, group, and we support entrepreneurs training and support. Love it, love it. Hey, Kareem. Okay. So the other one is another reason to have your own Facebook group. Uh, sound your um, ideal members out first with private messages. Uh, never automatically add someone. Don't do that. That's what someone says. Oh, I've got like 5,000 people in my Facebook group. I said, really? 5,000 people join your group? No, I added them. Okay. They didn't ask to be added. You just added them to your group. So you don't add that because you want people to join it. You can ask them or they can find you, but if you add them, that's like spamming. Again, I'm trying, my name is Pam, not spam, okay? So we're not trying to spam people. So so they, you wanna make sure never automatically add anyone. And, and you, you, know, you can make the group closed or secret, but open groups tend to attract like just anybody. You know, you know, something that's like, oh, I'm part of the VIP club. Everybody wants to be a part of a VIP club. Nobody wants to be, oh, well, anybody can join that club. So you want to make it either closed or secret. A lot of mine are closed, meaning that you have to be accepted. Open is meaning like anybody can join. And then it's usually, that's a lot of junk in there. Okay. Officially Ben Group, B-E-N for um, Business Empowerment Networking. I love that. Okay. All right. We'll get to there. All right. And so prepare your cover first. Branding is everything, so we have people in our Branding Accelerator that will help you with those type of things, uh, doing a brand cover, as well as a simple statement about what the group is about and how to join. And also write a sticky post to pin, you know, you pin things at the top of the group so that it contains the guidelines. That way you can tell people, say, you know, you can't sell in the group, whatever your guidelines are. Like, basically in my group, I'm just saying, don't spam my people, okay? We're here to learn from each other and we're here to connect. So the other thing is do create a slogan for the Facebook group to sum up the mission. Uh, share the word of your group first with your ideal existing clients and then through Facebook posts. So never just add people. There's a way, a proper way to do it. Use keywords in your promotional posts, ones that your ideal um, uh, customers will respond to. And then also create a vanity URL for the group. And so for, for National Association of Black Podcasters, it's NAB podcasters.com and that's a many url so if you go there nab as in boy a national association of black podcasters.com you'll actually go to the group so that's a many url so you know that's some of the things that we show you in the branding accelerator so start your own group have a, a title a cover the rules ready um look over to the left hand to find the facebook feed and then find groups and then you create the group Okay, so if you don't know how to do it, that's kind of like how you do it. I know, Pamela, you know how to do it. You have one. Um, and then send invites to people that, w that you know would be interested, but never just add them. All right. So start your own group. So my, the, the number one tip is if your Facebook group is going to be a perk for a paid membership site or a VIP club that you're about to launch, consider inviting ideal candidates to join for free as beta testers, both for your new club and its accompanying Facebook group. They will be flattered that you want them to join for free, and then you will turn out to be your best promoters and your affiliates, but you'll receive highly helpful feedback and buzz before you do the big launch. All right, so that's like my big tip. So that is, that is actually, thank you. Thank you, Carmen. So number five, running the challenge, okay? And happy belated birthday, Carmen. I saw you had a birthday not too long ago. <laughs> Um, why run a challenge? So a challenge, you see these people do it. And the challenges are free. Let me just say this. Challenges are free. Never charge for a challenge. I saw someone, I'm not going to say any names, but it was like, I'm going to charge for a challenge. Don't charge for the challenge. The challenge is a way to attract people to break past long-term obstacles and take action. So you want people to like, a challenge would be, uh, you know, post your, your new current Headshot. Okay, so I've I've got to get new headshots because I got new hair, right? So so a challenge would be okay. I want everybody to do a photo, and then next week over the next few days, you know, do your photos, and then everybody post their. That's like a challenge, you know, just challenge everybody to get their new headshot, right? But you don't charge for that. So that's that's enough. That's like that's about as bad as adding people to a group who didn't ask for it. Okay, so you don't want to do that. Uh, make sure the challenge has benefits and advances your ideal member in a transformer trans formative way. So like I said, um, posting a new headshot or making sure that you get your banner URL. 
You need a vanity URL for your Facebook group. You need a vanity URL for your regular Facebook page. You need a vanity URL for your LinkedIn. So for my LinkedIn, give an example, is linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Pam Perry PR coach. Okay, it's not a lot of letters and numbers. Okay, extraneous letters and numbers. It is Pam Perry PR coach. So all of them are Twitter. Twitter is like a name that you know you had to pick but sometimes when you join certain things like linkedin uh youtube is another example they'll give you letters and numbers so if you go to youtube.com forward slash pam perry tv that's a vanity url i had to pick that or it or else it would have been uh, youtube.com pam uh, 46329xyz it's like no i'm not going to remember that so pam perry tv is a vanity URL. So make sure that you do that. That could be something where you challenge people to post their vanity URL for their Facebook group or for their YouTube channel or for something else that they have. It helps your challenge your members achieve a goal, fulfill a dream, empowers your challenge member with confidence of skills to finally take the next step, provides a knowledge of the community, offering support and encouragement. So a lot of times you run a challenge within your Facebook group, um, provides the validation from other members, and then uh, allows you to share and celebrate the success. So that's just something that you do with your group. For instance, um, one of the things I always tell people, I said, I, I would like you to start a podcast. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I know. I really like you start a podcast. So then the challenge is let's start a podcast. Even if you podcast once a month, a show, at least start the podcast or a challenge could be do a Facebook live and then post your Facebook live in the group. So challenges are fun because then you can encourage each other and it's like, okay, if everybody else is going to jump in the pool, I guess I'm going to jump in the pool. You're not going to drown. We're there to help you. <laughs> the other reason why to run a challenge, there's no more powerful testimony from a person that you directly help succeed and, and reach a goal. You know, it, it excites the member, something they were struggling with that they didn't want to do. Um, they find it easy. They, they, they just want to know like, what's the next challenge? It's like, I got that. Now what, now what else is next? So that's, that's one of the things I love challenges. It's like, I'm going to get this. And so how to run a, a challenge, Facebook group or with your member or your membership uh, site. Uh, instant minute challenges, like give people small, just like it's small, like I said, like a new Facebook uh, hit shot, you know, nothing too hard, not like, oh, we want you to, um, you know, create a sizzle reel. And it's like, okay, that's a, that's a bit of a challenge because I'm going to need an editor for that. Uh, the other thing, make sure, hey, Kim, I just, I'm sorry, I'm trying to, trying to, and other, other thing when you're doing Facebook lives, make sure that you acknowledge people that come on. So, and that's Karen. Hey, Allo. And uh, it's on the other one. Hey, Randy. Randy, Beverly. R Randy and I were part of an organization, Create Milestones and Checkpoints. We're in a part of an organization called the Beepers, Black Public Relations Society, the Detroit chapter. Randy was the founder for the Detroit chapter. And Pat Tobin, bless her soul, bless her heart, has gone on to glory be with the Lord. But Pat started that uh Ooh, Brandy, what was that, 30 years ago or so? Probably longer than that. Well, at least 25 for sure. But the Black uh, Public Relations Society, it still has a Detroit group here. Hey, Dr. Yolanda, still has a group here. So say, for instance, Beepers, I'm not sure if they have a Facebook group, but if they did have a Facebook group, maybe there's a challenge that they can do. I know there's Women in PR, they have a group. And then I think there's some other groups of, of PR people that have groups. So like I said, tribes are people that have like interests and they're things that, that they want to share with each other. So the top challenge tip is create a free mini version of your challenge to inspire people, give them a taste of what you're offering to create momentum, and then conclude the mini challenge with a paid version of a larger version of the same goal. So say for instance, I may do a challenge for my branding accelerators and say, I want everyone to post a bio. Okay, post your bio, 200 words. 200 word bio. So they post their bio. And so the winner of the bio maybe gets like a, a headshot, a free photo shoot so they can have a headshot to go with the bio. And then we, we create like a one sheet for them or something like that. So the challenge is that the winner gets something, not just a challenge, not like, hey, at a boy, but, or at a girl, but just you get something. All right. So the other thing is method number six, create podcasts. I love podcasts. Okay. I'm going to say that. 
Um, National Association of Black Podcasters is going to be launching next month. No April Fool for real. It's going to be launching. And we do have a Facebook group that has started right now, National Association of Black Podcasters. If you have a podcast, join. But one of the things that I love about podcasts, and one, you don't have to put on your makeup and, and do your hair and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> you just really use your microphone. So one of the things is that it's a regular reoccurring podcast with a strong thing that helps you create a habit with your followers to really listen to you, to listen to you. And I love podcasts, especially if I'm driving long distances or I'm just, you know, I'll say Alexa, play, tune in. And then I'll listen to my favorite podcast. Uh, Ignite to Impact is a podcast I produce. I love that podcast. I have my own podcast with my daughter called Whatever. Yeah, she named it. She called it Whatever. Uh, I have another podcast called Synergy Energy and another podcast called Chocolate Pages. And then I also have one called the Pam Perry Podcast. So I'm into podcasts. So also podcasting is strong branding. It gives you a strong identity that people will tend to remember. So you will see this, this whole podcast movement. Now, podcasting is not new. It's been around for a while. Podcast came from the word iPod and then a cast, like your 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 anyway it's it it really was a thing from the iphone ipod podcasting and so and and they're in itunes which is now apple podcast but anyway it's a whole nother thing but you want to make sure that your podcast is part of your brand and that i saw someone create a um um a podcast and it had nothing to do with their brand i'm like okay well why are you spending time creating a podcast and you're really financed, but then now you're doing a cooking podcast. Okay. It's like, what, what is that? So you want to make sure that you have a podcast that really aligns with your brand. What people tend to remember ignite to impact, which is Dr. Geneva's podcast is a podcast ignite to impact, inspiring greater leaders for greater purpose is really her overall branding of that, but it, igniting them, meaning igniting them to, have action to make an impact in the community in the world in their life so that's one of the things it also gives you a quality product and and if you have a really good well-produced podcast it's a quality product and you can really really do a lot with that it's very shareable it's a more personal connection uh, your audience gets to hear and recognize your voice and they're rec and you're recording it in real time and it's also a way to, you can strategize your podcast to introduce your services and lead up to sales funnel offerings. So this is something we go over in the Branding Accelerator because if, if you're like, what the heck is a sales funnel offerings? We go over that in the Branding Accelerator. Can't go over it today, just really, really quick. But this is just some of the things that we go over in the Branding Accelerator because one of the ways where you're doing a podcast or you could do a webinar, but say you can even, I can even strip the, the audio from this particular webinar and make this a podcast. Yeah. So a lot of times you, when you're doing things and when you're creating content, you want to be able to use it more than one or two ways, right? So one of the ways of doing that is really building up to like a sales funnel. So you see the, the URL down at the bottom of this branding accelerator program.com forward slash app. If you want to apply to be in the next branding accelerator program, which starts April 9th, then you will go to that link but I'm doing a webinar, but it could have been a podcast, but it leads up to introduce leads and sales um, offerings. The other one, how to use a podcast. So how to use a podcast. Oh my goodness. Let me, what is the time? Hmm. Hey, Elizabeth, how often do you record, um, record? Should it be weekly shows? I would say, yeah, some people though, this is Elizabeth. That's a good question. Some people record every day and they have the best traction for their podcast. If you have the time, oh, one of the podcasts I love, um, she records every day. Uh, Elaine Fluker, I believe she records every day. So Elaine records every day, Support is Sexy. And then John Lee Dumas, he records every day, Entrepreneur on Fire. Those tend to have higher ranking because they're recording every day. And then also Grisham's, um, I Am CEO, he records every day. Mostly they're weekly. There's some that are monthly, and then there's some that's sporadic whenever they, some people are live when they're, when they're doing their podcast, like when they go to an event, and that's a good way to do it. But weekly is probably the typical way to do a weekly and then drop it on a regular time, like every Sunday, every Wednesday, you're dropping a podcast. Those are probably the more typical ones that to really, so that's a good question, Elizabeth. Um, hey, Sarita, how are you doing? So podcasting, if you love to talk, if that's your thing, 
rather than video, I would say pick a topic, a timely topic, hot topic, something your Facebook group or your page are currently looking and get excited about. Create a series. Don't make it isolated, unrelated podcast. So like it, you know how when you have TV, you know, like season one, season two, season three. So make season one about coaching, season two about selling, season three about whatever. So they're, those podcasts are all about that. Give them a strong theme. People will then consume it and listen to it in a more organized way. Uh, give your series a catchy title, you know, re repeat the title in every episode. Your topic should always stay the same, but your episodes should deal with single elements of that topic. Write short, short and powerful notes. Now, again, I will say this, and, and this is just, this is, if this is, I'm seeing who's on, Dr. Yolanda, Sarita, Elizabeth. I'm not sure if a lot of you guys' background, Carmen, I know you aren't. So writing show notes or writing press releases or writing any of those things, if, you're a, if you love writing and you love communicating, I'm a communicator by trade. I was trained in journalism. I've been a publicist. You know, I do publicity. I, I, I produce TV shows. So a lot of this stuff is easy for me. That's why I can teach it. I have to really remember that even though it's social media and everybody has access to it, not everybody can do it well or everyone wants to do it or knows how to do it. So when I say write short, powerful show notes, it's like, what the heck is that? The show notes are just basically a summary of the podcast and the links. Sometimes you can, you can even hire someone to do the show notes for them. You could send them your MP3 after you uploaded it to iTunes or, or had it distributed through Libsyn, and you can say, hey, do my show notes. And they'll do timestamps on them where they'll actually say at this segment that she talked about this, these are the links. So the show notes are really the main reasons why people would even listen because it, lay, it lives on a website page, but before people listen, they'll look at your show notes and they'll look in the photos and then they'll decide kind of like an album cover, right? It's kind of like, you know, you got to have a good CD cover before I really even know if I want to buy the CD back in the day or album cover. So people spend a lot of time on the album covers before they really knew all the songs. So it's really the same thing with, with that. You've got to show people before they listen. The other way to use a podcast, uh, people ask me all the time, how long should it be? Okay. Hey, author, I admit. Oh, Dr. Okay, yeah. I love Dr. Missy. Dr. Missy's about to get her podcast going soon, too. Isn't that right, Dr. Missy? Is she listening to the replay? Yeah, I've been talking to her about it. But anyway, 30 minutes is the longest, okay? No one wants to listen to two hours podcast. Okay, that's too long. Ask listeners to share the link. If you want your podcast, because Karen Taylor Bass has a really good podcast called um, Chapter 2, K KTB, Karen Taylor Bass. So what she does when she does a podcast, she does an email, she uses email marketing, and she tells people to take a listen and share the link. So you have to tell people to share the link. Just like, I want you all to share this live. I didn't. I didn't ask you all if you could share this live to your page. But that's one of the ways that if you don't tell people, they're not going to think about it for you. So just share it. Yeah. Oh, you you love Karen Taylor Bass? She, oh, yeah. And Dr. Missy. I love her, too. She's cool. She's good. I, I have good people in my tribe. I I love I love good people. OK, if you're a shyster, a charlatan or, uh, uh, you know, uh, people trying to just greedy and you, you have no purpose and it, mm -mm, you, you, you get booted out of my tribe. You're, you're probably not. You, you it's kind of like the gremlins. It's like I'm a bright light. And so, you know, I, 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 I repel darkness. I don't want people like that in my tribe. People who are in my tribe are. Um, authentic. They really want to make a difference in the world. They share. They're heart centered. They're spiritual. They're probably um, very into Jesus. And these are the people that I'm rolling with. Okay, we're making it happen. We are King's kids. Okay. The other thing is use a good microphone. Use a good microphone. If you, I'm doing a Facebook Live right now, I'm doing Logitech, so it's not through my computer. Usually, the computer one is not as good, so you want to use a good microphone. Um, downstairs um, in my studio, I have another good microphone. It has a popper and all that. Or you can go into a studio. Bob Ivory, he has a studio. He has people who do music have good microphones, right? So he has a lot of good equipment and sound. I'm not saying you've got to have like mics, like they're thousands of dollars, but you could go on Amazon and actually buy a good mic for like 60, 70 bucks, okay? 
um, use uh, upload your podcast to iTunes and then basically you'll see like an example what that what that one looks like so one of the top um, podcasting tip uh, is making sure that you know if you're using Windows or or or, or um, a Mac most people are kind of like using Windows but like I said I use uh, this one is a Windows so I use a Logitech uh, 390 um, uh, microphone but you can also use a headset I also use this as well so you can kind of see this one this is when I do a podcast so you can pull it out <laughs> sorry this right here so you can see is a lapel and it plugs right into the computer got it off of Amazon I think it was 70 bucks or something like that but it's one way where you could plug it in and you don't really need a headset per se you just plug it in that way and it's so many things that's why I started the National Association of Black Podcasters there's so many tips learning trial and error trying to buy which microphone I have that other microphone over there the um, the Yeti mm -mm, no it looks good it's good for photo shoots but it's a piece of crap all right so anyway the most important uh, strategy of all is really making sure whatever method you use that you use to connect with your tribe make sure that you nurture them that you integrate more than one method for reinforcement like I said it could be podcast it could be email it could be Facebook group but you want to make sure that you're consistent in terms of branding and then that that you enjoy doing it now one of the things if you don't like video don't do video okay because if, if it's painful to you it's going to be painful for us watching okay so but it'll grow naturally never buy like if you're on instagram don't buy don't buy don't buy um you know people buying friends or followers and stuff don't do that 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 is how authentic is that going to be you buying followers really it's like trying to buy a friend so who wants to do that so there's so many things about really building a tribe building the platform like i said it's the first step in really building your brand that there are little nuances of things little etiquette things that you should know um i try to take time to really go through all that through the uh, branding accelerator uh the branding accelerator program is one of the programs that it, this was how long was this what time is it it's roughly about i think i did this in about an hour or so but basically what i do in the the branding accelerator is 12 weeks and basically it starts april 9th and we go over things from guest experts from publishing television radio newspapers public relations photography which is very important today uh, videography which is definitely important uh, content marketing ghost writing because a lot of people say I don't have time to write I work full-time or whatever I just I just want to speak it out and I want somebody to write it we got somebody for you you could do that uh, social media marketing it's like I don't know how to do social media I don't even know how to we got somebody to help that graphic design so within the branding accelerator program it's a way for you to accelerate your brand but the main thing is that it sustains because anybody can accelerate and you could be an overnight success but you have to sustain so one of the things that I want to make sure that the group that actually is part of the branding accelerate that they gel together that they're friends that they're not competitors that they're collaborators and that they help each other not only just navigate online but offline as well that they have events that they support each other if they put post something on social media that they're sharing it they maybe do if there's someone is doing a launch then maybe they'll promote it on to their list so it's a good collaboration you can't the bishop vashti uh, mckenzie just won the legacy award last uh, week in vegas she said no one gets anywhere alone and collaboration is key she's like the first african-american bishop for the ame church i love her and she's on the she's she'll be on the cover again this year for speakers magazine but one of the things that you really do need someone to really share the insider secrets you need to connect with media people that will tell you the inside scoop you need a group that really has your best interest in heart and you also need a consistent time of 12 weeks of just focusing on your business just focusing on your business look at my hair it's so different there isn't it oh I need a new <laughs> hey Felicia I need a new photo shoot soon <laughs> so that's one of the main things that it's just 12 sessions with 10 experts that will be really talking to people about how to accelerate and sustain their brand because I'm all about sustaining it and if you don't sustain it that what what is the point so we're taking applications for 
the Branding Accelerator right now. And it is brandingacceleratorprogram.com forward slash app. And, you know, let's have a conversation, see if it's the right fit for you now, see if it's the right time for you now. If you're really ready to put your head in the game and really crush it, that's, that's what we're going to do. If you're ready, I'm ready for you. But if you're not ready, I'll let you know. And they say, maybe you need to wait. I only offer this twice a year. So it's only going to be live twice a year. So if you're interested in doing that, like I said, this PowerPoint um, about the six ways to engage. Yes, Rosalind, I will keep it up so that you kind of can go through it. But these are some of the things that we kind of go over in the, uh, in the Branding Accelerator program. We have great experts that uh, I'll be sharing out uh, shortly. Uh, I know one, Dr. Gail Hayes, she just accepted to be one of our guest experts, and she's going to be talking about how to land speaking gigs. She'd just be speaking all over the place. And um, she just, last weekend, she interviewed Kathy Hughes, too, so I'm really proud of her as well. But she was a client about 10 years ago, and she's doing excellent. I really, 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 um, like I said, it's not about just acceleration, but it's about sustainability. And so if you can be in this game for five years, six years, seven years, 10 years, 20 years, you're doing the darn thing, okay? And that's really what I want people to do, to take their message to the masses, to the world, but also to make it uh, a legacy and that they stay with it, okay? So if you all have any questions, Lizbeth, ah, there you go. Thank you. Thank you, Felicia. I know it's warm in Arizona. Sarita, Yolanda, Carmen, thank you for joining. Pamela, if you all want to put your Facebook groups down here below, feel free to do that. Hey, Darren and Whitney, um, make sure you do that, okay? All righty. But yeah, the application deadline is March 30th. We start April 9th. It'll be via Zoom like this. And it's 7 o'clock to about 8, 8.30. Sometimes we go 9. Um, but like I said, if you're ready, I'm ready. I have the energy. I love talking about this stuff. I really, really do. I love it. I love, I've been doing it my whole life. I love speakers and authors and those that are really um, content creators that want to make a difference. So with that, I will talk with you all later. Yay! All righty. So thanks for joining me, guys. And I'm going to get new headshots soon. Uh, I think I'm going to wait for my hair to get a little bit longer, though. But the shrinkage is real. <laughs> the shrinkage is real. She warned me. Thank you, Danielle, for doing my curls. All righty. I will talk with you later. Have a, good, have a good weekend, everyone. So let me know what next Lunch and Learn topics you want to go over, okay? So this one was really talking about platform building, but we can go over some other stuff as well. The, the, the P's for the platform. For <laughs> The P's are... The P's are, let's see, here they are. The P's are publicity, positioning, publishing, partnering, and platform building. All right, so we did platform building first, but but we could talk about partnering, publishing, positioning, publicity. Okay, so happy International Women's Day, everyone. And um, I will see you all later. All righty, take care. Thanks, Darren. Okay, let's see, make sure. All right. Thank you, Pamela. Do you go by Pamela? I guess so. Pamela, Pamela Wright. Okay. Hey, Lakeisha. All right. I will see you soon. Okay. At the Navo thing, National Association of Women Business Owners. Okay. All righty. And also to go to Nicole's event as well. That's the 30th. That's March 30th. Her event is um, uh, in the last speaker's magazine. So you want to make sure that you go there. Nicole. Oops. The fierce is my buddy here. I guess I'm trying to copy, get my hair like Nicole's here. But hers is go to her event, find your fierce experience.com. It's coming up in Detroit on the 30th. Okay. All right. All right, guys. I will talk to you later. All right. I guess it's time to go and get my, my next call. All right. Thank you. Okay. We did an hour. All right. Talk to you later. Bye bye.